Brother Cliff's going to come share with us this morning. Yeah, you'll look in your bulletin and it says to be announced. Oh, my, my new name is Two. My middle name is B. And last name announced. So, uh, or, or you could just call me TBA. <laughs> TBA for short. Anyway, I appreciate Carol because uh, I was looking for search me, oh God. And she says, no, it's called cleanse me. And so she, she helped me this morning. Uh, to, on this uh, on this particular thing. Now, this is interesting. I'm going to uh, share at the very end of my message this morning, which will be a short message because we're having the Lord's Supper. And this is a scripture in Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties, and see if there's any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Now, as just before I went to sleep last night, I was going over in my mind the message that I have been working on for two weeks now. And I was going over in my mind, and uh, just b the, before I went to sleep, I uh, began to sing this song. Then in the middle of the night, I thought, you know what? I'm supposed to sing on Sunday morning. <laughs> so anyway, God bless you. Uh, uh, Y'all have been so good to us, amen. Y'all have been so forgiving. So anyway, uh, this, uh, this song uh, is, a, is a tremendous prayer to the Lord. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, O oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. I praise the Lord for cleansing me from sin, fulfill thy word and make me pure within. Fill me with fire where once I burned with shame. Grant my desire to magnify thy name. I'm going to preach this morning on um, what lies beneath the surface, and it's found in... Um, Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. By the way, I had uh, quite a conversation with our uh, missionaries from the Philippines this last week online. We were talking online back and forth. And then they sent from their church, they were around a table, a large table, and they sent a song to my wife. And then a prayer. And I took the computer into the bedroom. And uh, we watched it together and cried and wept. And it was a, a, a precious time. And uh, so uh, anyway, our, our, our missionaries are, are praying for us. 
during this time. They heard, of course, heard about the hurricane and uh, everything else that's going on, and they're they're suffering with the COVID shutdown in a worse way than we are. They completely shut down everything in the Philippines, and so uh, to where the they're very very limited is to go into the store to get supplies and things like that. We have a whole lot more freedom here than they have there during the COVID uh, shutdown. So anyway, uh, Psalm 91, uh, it's familiar scripture. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him, I will trust. Let's pray. Dear Father, we're grateful that we have the scriptures, we have one another, we have the Holy Spirit. Lord, we have all that we need in these days. No matter what takes place, no matter what happens in our lives, whether it's a hurricane or whether it's physical difficulties or the combination of all the above, Lord, we know that you're there for us. You're our fortress, you're our refuge, you're our helper in the time of need. And Lord, we not only know this and believe this, Lord, we've experienced it time and time and time again. And so, Lord, we're thankful for your grace that sustains us in these days. We ask your blessings upon us this morning, this very special time of observing the, the Lord's table of the uh, Lord reminding ourselves and, uh, of, of your price that was paid, the price that was paid for our sins. And Lord, we're thankful that we have this opportunity together as your people. In Christ's name, amen. Before we come to the end of the service, because we'll go into the, the Lord's Supper service, there's actually two layers on the top of this cup. And uh, the um, uh, deacons will hand them out to you so that we're not passing the plate. They will hand you, uh, uh, the, the, pass the plate right in front of you. And when you get this cup, you'll find a cellophane top with a, a little design of a cross on it. And then there is another tab as well. So it's a two-layered thing. So uh, be very careful. I don't want you to get st your clothes stained or your, in your, if you're in your car, I don't want you to get your, your car stained up from doing this. So be very, very careful in, in regards to this. And so um, I think they're already handing that out in the parking lot and then we'll observe the uh, communion service at the end of this service uh, this morning. Now, it goes without saying the fact that all things are not as they appear to be. Uh, it goes to people, it goes to organizations, structures, and even relationships. They must have a real substance to them if they're going to last in these days. There's two things. I heard something in listening to uh, a podcast this morning that had to do with uh, uh, going through trials. And uh, the per I, I forget who it was. It was quoted a, a pastor that had passed on. But he said that uh, as you, you, you go through a very trying time and how you know that you're going through a storm or a tragedy and uh, the, that you know that you're going to withstand uh, the, the, the hour of the trial is the fact that you have gone through some things in the past and that you have stood strong in, uh, in those things. The Lord has helped you and given you strength. And so you know that then God will continue. We call it um, the Ebenezer principle. God who has led me in the past, who is leading me now, will also lead me yet in the future. And uh, so uh, during Hurricane Laura... We, in our house, moved from the bedroom to the living room 
because uh, the bedroom has it right beside it in the neighbor's yard, just a few feet away, this giant pine tree, this big around, okay? And so we just pictured in our minds that that thing could fall across the bedroom and uh, it would be a, a great uh, tragedy. And so we thought we were safer by moving into the living room and then when the north wind came across, it blew the big tree uh, over across the house and separated the back wall and did not actually, the tree did not come into our living room, but uh, the ceiling did, uh, fell some, and, and uh, it was a, a, a quite a traumatic experience. And so, but uh, the, the structure of the house was so well built and um, when uh, I bought the house about 14 years ago, Walt was one of those that helped me, and I think Charlie also, and some others uh, um, here that uh, I think JC helped too in, in regards to that, others maybe as well. Uh, we worked on the structure of the house in opening it up, uh, the uh, knocking out walls and and putting uh, some things up, and so I went up and got, got some good advice on how to reinforce the structure up uh, above us. And then when I had the, the, some other remodeling done, the hip roof on the back, they, they, uh, to join and put a gable on the end, they, instead they, uh, they, they didn't uh, completely undo the house and redo it, they just built over the top of the hip roof which made the structure very, very strong. And that bore the brunt of the tree as it came down. Now I'm saying all this because what, it wasn't just the fact there was 16 gauge metal on the top, but it was everything that was in the, uh, underneath the surface that uh, the, the, the structure of the home that held a, a strong in the storm. And uh, I'm likening that as to the fact that when we build our lives, there has to be some strong structure to withstand the storms of life because the storms will come. It may be uh, years and years before we have another storm or there's one that's out there now. That we're all watching it, okay? But you, you, you have to anticipate the fact that storms will come, tragedies will happen, and so you have to have a strong uh, uh, constitution. You have to have a, a, a some th things that are braced up in your life that are strong to withstand uh, the uh, storms and tragedies and uh, uh, unforeseen things of life. And so we have the kind, we need the kind of substance that makes up the framework of our faith that will save us morally, spiritually, and provide stability in a very unstable world. And so the, the, we have the church, the people of the church, and that's part of the, the structure. We have the word of God that is very key. Uh, to uh, having the, the promises of the Word of God, not just things that are written on a page, but things that are part of our lives. It actually becomes a, a real part of us, of our faith. And then we have the Spirit of God, which takes the Word of God and applies it into our lives and builds it into us. It's not just something that we... Uh, come to us on Sunday morning and say, well, you know, I, I, I heard the word of God. I, I'm uh, giving mental assent to the fact that this is what it says and this is true. But it becomes a, a real part of, of the substance of your life. And uh, when it talks about faith in the Bible, it says faith is a substance. Uh, that uh, and, and we understand that faith is real. It's a real solid substance. I, I used the illustration years ago of, of just like these uh, pews are made out of a very strong wood. And it's got a little veneer on it that keeps popping off and we're kind of frustrated with that. But, but the actual structure of the, of the pews and the, and the building itself, 
We had some people that come here uh, during the storm uh, uh, as a shelter because you kind of look at this building and say, I think, I think it's going to be all right <laughs> Man, in the storm. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the shingles might blow off. Some of the shingles did blow off, but, but you think hey, it's a pretty safe place. Well, uh, the same thing in our, in our lives, we, we must have uh, something that's real uh, and our faith is real. So notice our, how that uh, uh, we don't uh, uh, despair, but um, let me try to adjust that a little bit. We're not to despair or we're not even to be angry to the point uh, that it destroys our joy in these days. We're, uh, we don't need anything that turns our confidence away from God so that we can uh, accomplish what God would have us to accomplish, that we could be what God would have us to be, that we would do what God would have us to do. And so it says that he's our refuge and our fortress. Now, the text speaks of refuge, and we think of refuge as being in hiding or retreat or leaving the battle. But a refuge is necessary for refreshment and restoration. And so it speaks of the secret place. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. There's no question this is the place of prayer. This is a place of meditation and seeking out God's will. And uh, 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 looking in uh, a faithful prayer routine must be beneath the surface in every believer uh, that is serious about living for God. We win the battle when we're on our knees. We win the battle not in the strength of the flesh, but in total dependence upon God. So it talks on only about a place of refuge. It speaks of God's protection as well. If you're close enough to be in his shadow, it says he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you're in God's shadow, that means you're real close, amen? He's close to you, you're close to him, you're in his shadow. And so uh, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 33, verse 27, the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. And they say that in the Hebrew language, that word underneath is very, very descriptive. It has to do with the fact that it's not just underneath somewhere, but it talks about underneath the bottom. As low as you can go, you're going to find still underneath there are the everlasting arms of God that are reaching out, ready to lift us up and to help us in our time of need. And so he has brought us near uh, above uh, are his wings and below are his arms and he has us covered. He has brought us near to him in Ephesians 2 and verse 13 it says, But now in Christ Jesus you who were once afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Now, we're now incorporating and talking about the blood of Christ in regards to uh, observing the Lord's table this morning and the fact that uh, the juice represents his blood, uh, the, the wafer uh, represents the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are brought near to God by his blood, the Bible says. Then the presence of God is one of the most comforting and helpful features of God's salvation. In Psalm 139, uh, the psalmist says these words. He says, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. And so uh, that whole psalm uh, deals with the presence of God and how that it's so real and so uh, helpful in our lives. So our text not only speaks of refuge, but it also speaks of God being a fortress. When I think of a fortress, I think of a strong structure so strategically placed with thick walls where the enemy cannot penetrate. The blood of Christ covers us and gives us this kind of protection. We have protection from the penalty of sin, and beyond that, we have shelter 
from the attacks of the enemy. Now, there's great blessing and strength in our bond together with Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and talking about the cup of the, uh, of the Lord's table, it says these words in verse 16 of 1 Corinthians 10, the cup of blessing which we bless, is, not, is, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, though many, are, uh, are one bread and one body, for we all are partakers of that one bread. And so that's another aspect of the communion service in the fact that it not only relates to us personally with God, but we relate together as one body partaking of this together in Christ. And so then there's not only a, a blessing of strength in our bond together in Christ, but there's a restoration in taking refuge in Christ and in his blood. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that is a, a great blessing. And then it goes uh, just a, a previous verses, a couple of verses previous to that. It says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And so that uh, is, is an uh, all-inclusive understanding of, of what God has done in dying on the cross, not just to pay the penalty for our sin, but to bring us to a place of relationship, a place of, of where we can gain strength and we can uh, flourish and we can function and we can uh, continue on in the grace of Almighty God. Uh, that was a, a, a one, one thing that I also heard uh, in a, one of the podcasts I was listening to this last week, and that was the fact that it was talked about the, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the cross reminds us of the awfulness of sin. But it all goes beyond that and reminds us also of the amazing grace of God. Amen? And that's really what we're looking at here at the Lord's table is the fact that the penalty that he paid for sin, but it goes beyond that and the amazing grace of his forgiveness. And then the final thing this morning is self-examination. That is the key to understanding why he says, do this in remembrance of me. Why does God, uh, why did Jesus set forth this as uh, we call it an ordinance, but as a practice for the church? He says, do this in remembrance of me. In the book of, um, of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it's very instructive on telling us why and how we're to partake of the Lord's table. And so uh, what lies beneath the surface in our lives? Is it fear or is it faith? Is it hate or is it love? Is it despair or is it hope? Are we dependent upon God or are we dependent upon our own wisdom, our own strength? And so here's what uh, Paul uh, sets forth uh, as a self-examination. A checkpoint, if you please. If we go and say, okay, let me, let me have an examination and let, uh, as we sang this morning, search me, O God. And so in, in 1 Corinthians 11, it says, Therefore whoever, in verse 27 now, Therefore whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And so the scriptures we find uh, uh, tell us, uh, communicate that partaking of the communion service is a command of the Lord and is to be used to remember the body of Christ and his blood which was shed on the cross. Back to 1 Corinthians 11 now, starting at verse 23. 
It says, for I, uh, this is Paul saying, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night which he was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my, of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat uh, this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And so we find that to, it, it is a time of uh, self-examination. It's a time of reflection upon what the Lord has done. It's also a time of looking forward uh, to his coming. It says, till he comes. So the question is, what lies beneath the surface in our lives this morning as we partake of the Lord's table? And I wanted to end with Psalm 139 once again. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Would you stand with us this morning with our heads bowed? Our Father, we're grateful that we have the opportunity to confess our sins, to examine ourselves, to allow the Word of God, the Spirit of God to put his finger on something in our lives. We all have struggles, but God, your grace is real. We all have needs, but you're the supplier. We all have anxieties, but God, you're the one that can quell our fears. God, we ask that we would turn to you and not to ourselves. Lord, we're not trusting in any kind of religious uh, organization. We're trusting totally in you this morning. We, we don't to partake of this as an ordinance of a Baptist church, but we partake of this as an ordinance that you have laid out for us. So, Lord, we're thankful that you have given your body, you have given your blood, poured out your blood for the remission of sins. And Lord, as we partake of this, may we be remembering that this morning in Christ's name. Amen. Would you remain standing? I believe we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. What song are we going to sing? 275. 275. to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. You may be seated, and uh, this uh, will take just a few moments, but uh, as they come and prepare the table this morning, uh, and we will turn to the scriptures in Matthew 26, where the Lord himself uh, met with his disciples before his death to talk about his death.
normally we have a tray with just the uh, bread, but this is all combined together. So we're gonna, they're gonna pass it out in just a moment. And uh, we're gonna do things just a little different. We're gonna have a word of prayer and thanks for, for the body, which the wafer represents that. And then we're gonna also pray at the same time and thanking God for the blood of Christ that takes away the sin of the world. So let's pray at this time. Lord, we understand that it's a very solemn time, Lord, when we come to remember the price that was paid for our sin. And Lord, you, you said literally in the Bible that you took our sins in your body and paid the price on the tree. And Lord, we understand that it wasn't just a, a decorative cross that you were crucified on. Lord, it was a, a rugged tree, cross members put together. And Lord, you suffered a cruel death, but it wasn't just physical. Lord, it was more so spiritual, the price that was paid. And you taking the sin of the world and paying the price for our sin. We're thankful that you saw through the suffering to see the end result. And we're thankful that you loved us so much that you did this for us. We ask, Lord, in all things we would be mindful of you in this time. That's what it's for. It's a kind of a reset for us. It's a time of self-examination. It's a time of, of reflection. And Lord, it's been some time since we've done this because of all the COVID and all that. But God, you know our hearts. You know our needs. You know our desires. We ask your blessings upon us now. In Christ's name, amen. All right, they're going to be handing them out uh, and personally to you. And um, what a precious time it is to reflect upon what the Lord has done for us at this time. <laughs> And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and he blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body. Likewise, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. I say to you that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until the time when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And he said, drink from it, all of you.
so thankful this morning that we have this opportunity. It is a great privilege. As he talked about the fact that one of these days we'll experience this with the Lord himself. And that's going to be a very precious, precious time. Well, let's uh, all stand to be dismissed in a word of prayer at this time. I'm going to ask Brother Walt, if he would, to take this microphone and, and for us a prayer. In dismissing us and remember to pray for one another. And also remember if there's anything we can do to help anyone that's in need, um, let us know. Heavenly Father, even uh, in the hardships uh, that surround us, we uh, maybe even uh, even even more so, uh, we're aware that ultimately uh, all this works to the good for those of us that love you. We do not uh, at all forget that you sent that Son who gave His very life for us, that uh, that we might not get what we deserve and spend an eternity in the devil's hell, but that it would become a part of your family forever. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for your loving us. Bless us now as we serve in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.